V8 Merc here, coming at you guys with another SHTF video. Uh, in this video, I'm talking about water purification techniques, specifically distillation. Uh, that was my dog, I don't know what he's doing. But uh, yeah, distillation. Here I have a distillation setup that I made myself, and I'll go over the basics of how distillation works. Uh, basically, you put water in the pot, and you bring it up to a boiling temp, which is 212, I think, at uh, sea level, and it varies at different altitudes. It goes up, and or it, the temperature has to be hotter for the water to boil to get the vapor. Then uh, the vapor comes up the column and into the condenser tube, and it cools down, and it comes out the spout right there. And here you should have uh, clean distilled water that's what distilled water is and those that's pretty much the basics of it uh, now uh, I'll give you a rundown on my setup here I have a pressure cooker an old pressure cooker I think probably from the 70s uh, the way that uh, font is written there um, and then I have a half inch pipe I, that's probably like 10 inches long and I have a threaded fitting here that goes into the lid and a T coming up here and uh, one side of the T is going to the condenser and I basically have a um, reducer fitting to this one quarter inch uh, copper flex pipe and I use uh, threaded fittings because that's the proper way to do it. These are brass. All the fittings have been soldered. I did, it, I did all the work myself and um, that's, well, that's this part. Now for the thermometer I have a rubber stopper that you can get from, you can find them online. Uh, they're they're stop corks for um, chemistry sets. So you gotta like Google chemistry stuff and uh, chemistry uh, rubber stopper or something like that. Flask rubber stoppers, and you can get different sizes. This one is five and a half. Um, that's the size on it, five and a half. And then here I have a digital uh, grilling thermometer. And um, I'll turn it on. Let's see what the temp is right now. About 77.9 inside here right now. And all it is, just a thermometer, just like that. And I just put a hole in the top of the rubber stopper. And the stopper comes out and I just kind of carved it and shredded it down so it would fit into the half inch pipe. Just put that on and that's and it's centered it's not touching the walls so it tells me the temperature of the vapor or the air temp inside the column and that gives me an accurate reading to uh, at what temperature am I um, boiling right now you know so as it goes through here and just goes through this pipe all it is is coiled around a actually an old fire extinguisher that came in a set of two I took one of them and I stripped the paint off of it and um, I have it wrapped around the fire extinguisher because the best way to get the heat to pull off of this vapor um, is to you know put it in a colder environment or to put something else around it. So the steam actually transfers its heat to the copper and the copper is transferring its heat to the steel and then this is also filled with water so the steel is transferring the heat to the water and water is the best uh, um, Oh, what is it called? It uh, has a high specific heat, so it can absorb a lot of energy. It absorb a lot of the heat. And so that's that. But this setup actually has to be in a five-gallon bucket. And that's why I have this fitting here. And this spout is supposed to be um, affixed to the outside of a bucket. And then this uh, other fitting over here um, is uh, threaded to the inside. So this is actually supposed to be a three-piece system. You know, you got this that disconnects from right here, right? And then you have the condenser coil, which disconnects from here. Right now I have it a little tight. And then you have the spout set up, spout and bucket, which is separate. Um, that's so you can break it down and set it aside and keep it out of the way. Uh, right now I had some problems with the bucket splitting and so I'm trying to work on a new setup. And I can't showcase it right now, but I will make a future video that I'll link somewhere uh, either at the end or maybe even right here uh, when I do showcase it to you guys. So stick around for that. Uh, 
Now you guys probably want to see what's on the inside of this as well. So on the inside here we have just this nut tightening that fitting right there. And I could take this apart if I wanted to. Basically just put a hole in the top part and that's it. And here there's the pressure release. Uh, that's plastic so that will give if it's too much pressure. Um, and then that just lets you know that the pressure has been built. And the problem sometimes arises where you get leaks from here or here. No biggie. Uh, for this one I just put two pieces of wire around it to keep it um, popped up. And then this, when this one pops up, there's a rubber seal on the inside and it stays uh, sealed up. I normally experience leaks through uh, the black one, through the plastic one, and um, not through this one at all. So that, those are just safety measures. That's why I recommend using a uh, pressure cooker, not just any pot, because it has those safety mechanisms built in, just in case if this gets clogged up or whatever, or it gets clogged here or anything, you know, anything can happen. Now, um, uh, distillation setups, you can not, you can only, you can do water, but it's not only limited to that. You can also do essential oils and stuff like that. Like I've thrown in mint leaves into my water and um, distilled it and I've gotten mint water, distilled mint water. It's like it, you drink it or you just like rinse your mouth out and it's really fresh. Um, you could, you know, if you found the temperatures of certain extracts, you can keep the temp up here to that temperature and you can extract certain uh, chemicals or certain, um, you know, plant extracts and end up with a very pure, I don't know, like, if you're using mint, you can get, like, the mint extract, which is, I think, salicylic acid, and you just have to monitor the temperature, so you can do something like that. Now, a big thing is everybody's been wondering, oh, do you do alcohol? Do you do alcohol? Well, alcohol can be done if you're making it for fuel, so you could use a setup for fuel making. Um, uh, consumption, you can't do it because it's not legal in the States. But if you want to make fuel, you have to get a permit. And I don't think it really costs anything, but you could do it. So you can make fuel, but you can't make it to drink. Um, in an SHTF situation, you know, you can do whatever you want at that point. But uh, it's also for safety as well because it has the potential of blowing up if, you know, the flame jumps to the out part or, you know, if you have a leak here and it catches on fire or something like that. You know, anything can happen. So you can do alcohol. You can do lots of different things with the uh, distillation setup here. Oh, and a quick thing. If you're wondering how alcohol is made, uh, it's simple. You just put yeast in, um, in some warm water and anything that has sugar in it. You could just do yeast and sugar and make alcohol because yeast eats sugar, makes alcohol, ethanol alcohol, and carbon dioxide. Now there's other bacteria that can be present and that makes methanol. And methanol can make you go blind. It will make uh, fumaric acid in your eyes and that's you start seeing fuzzy and then you go blind basically from there. So to make alcohol it's very simple. You just take yeast, water, sugar, or anything that has sugar. It could be corn, could be fruit, could be molasses, could be cereal, could be anything. Oats, anything. And then you just let it ferment till it stops fermenting. Then you boil it at a certain temp, about, I think, 176, 174 at sea level. Uh, I think it will vary, again, depending on where you live, just like with the water. And um, you can make alcohol almost 100%. Well, not 100%. Uh, pretty close to 100%. And then you can use that to put into your gasoline uh, burning engine. Could be a generator. That's one application I see. Um, that's just if you guys were wondering about how to make alcohol. It's very easy, very simple. Basically, anything with sugar yeast, let it go for a couple weeks and then you boil it. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, but mainly, this is just one technique that normally nobody talks about because everybody's talking about bugging out. Uh, this is a bugging in setup kind of deal. You know, if you have a water source and you just want to uh, not use chlorine, you can, you can boil the water, distill it, and you can use this, the condenser, you can heat up water to take baths with or to you know do other stuff with so you can do a couple different things you can make fresh water for yourself and you can also heat up water uh, in the evening for people to use to bathe or whatever you know 
So that's one thing I really noticed. Uh, when I do get a, get the setup and running and showing you guys, I'll show you. Um, you can put a valve on the side of the bucket, change out the water because you have to change out the water. It gets so hot. the t The steam is about 212 degrees roughly, so the water has to be changed out. It'll, the water is going to boil as well. It's going to get really hot. And um, the one of the things to note is the amount of energy you put in from a scientific standpoint. The amount of energy that you put in is you're not getting out the same amount of energy. You're losing a lot of energy to to do this setup, but it's a pretty good idea if you want to get really clean water you know that's also free of um, uh, minerals and you know stuff like that and if you do hard water in here you'll get hard water deposits I don't know if you can also see the discoloration that's because the water had run out and it um, changed the color of the stainless steel and uh, oh that brings up another good point should you use aluminum pots or whatever. I recommend stainless steel because that's food grade and um, I heard aluminum also when it gets too hot you know it can release some kind of chemicals or whatnot if you're using a big BTU setup, burner setup. You can even do it on the fire that too that's kind of hard to control the heat. But uh, stainless steel doesn't really flavor your water too much and the copper doesn't really do much either. Uh, it will give it a little bit of flavor difference but it's not a big deal. Most of the pipes under people's houses are copper anyways. So uh, that's my distillation setup. Uh, like I said, I'll show you guys in a further video of it running. Um, if you guys, what do you guys think as as this being a bug in, um, someone who's bugging in as their water uh, purification technique? Do you think it's a good idea? Um, taking note that I can also make water and heat up water, and do two things at once versus you know chlorine. You can just you know purify your water. That's it. So let me know what you guys think, and if you guys have any qu comments or questions, please leave them below, and I'll answer most of them or all of them. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Viet Merck, out.